morning, everybody. We are back testing the Rain Audio, not Rain Audio, Rain Commercial. Rain Commercial RH50 versus the Odyssey LCD1. We completed the base test. At the base test, I told you that these two headphones are essentially indistinguishable. They're, the base response is practically the same. Uh, except for the separation of the sub bass and the mid bass, which the RH50 does better than the LCD one, a $400 pair of headphones versus a 50, roughly $50 pair of headphones. Ugh. Now we are going to, let me get this out of the way real quick. Now we are going to start the mids test. And in the mids test, that's where we really get to figure out whether or not these two headphones are right for you. Now, if you're a mixing and mastering artist, uh, having bass boom may not really be something you're looking for. Maybe you want something that is fairly bass light. Maybe you don't really care about sub bass and mid bass separation. Your type of music that you master, that you mix, simply doesn't have those elements. Therefore, you don't really need to worry about it. I understand that. But then there's also the other side that mixing and mastering artists aren't the only ones who are going to buy the LCD one, right? I mean, Odyssey has a huge following of audiophiles for a good reason. And so plenty of audiophiles who don't have professional experience, who don't have jobs in the industry, uh, will buy the LCD one thinking one thing that these are neutral, that these are really um, accurate headphones as Odyssey promises but they're gonna get a completely different experience because that's simply not the case. It's not the case. I have found it over all the tests I've done with the LCD one. Other people uh, who have tested the LCD one have found it as well. Although they have been a lot more forgiving and excusing uh, Odyssey's failure than I am. I'm prone not to do that sort of thing. So in the base test, what, or excuse me, the, the mids test, what we really wanna find out is if you can put the base aside, let's say you don't really care, it doesn't apply to you the shortcomings of the LCD one and the base response, but you really do care about the mids and you know, you, everybody cares about the treble because treble harshness is an issue we all deal with, uh, like STDs. It's not a problem until it becomes a problem. And so you better know what you're dealing with before you actually have the STD. You know what I mean? The test today, we're gonna have three songs. We're going to have uh, Why Am I Like This by Orla Gartland. And the reason we're using Orla's song is because it's uh, her voice has a, a good amount of grain to it. And she has natural sibilance in her voice. And so we want to find out, number one, uh, is that grain and sibilance muted? And if it is muted, uh, how much of it is muted? Because if it is, then that means that one or, or the other or both of these headphones is not particularly accurate with respect to her voice. The next song we're going to listen to is Want You Back by Haim. And then finally, we are going to listen to Hush Hush Baby by Laxandra. So let's start getting into the nitty gritty. I have both headphones plugged into an AB switch. A is going to be the LCD one. B is going to be the RH50. Both are the, the switch, obviously, is plugged into the THX 887 amplifier. And the 887 amplifier has been warmed up. It's been warming for about 10 minutes or so. We are set it at uh, medium gain, and it's currently off. So zero volume, not off, but zero volume. Zero volume on this is about seven o'clock, which is kind of weird. I wish it was about six o'clock. We'll deal with it. The THX itself is plugged into the SMSLSU8, uh, connected by XLR, so we're getting balanced input, but obviously this is not balanced output because there's no way to make this balanced, although you can make this balanced if you wanted to. All right, bonus points before we start. Do you know what this is? This thing, I'll get really close. This is an ancient relic from 2008 to 2009, and I love it. This is my newest acquisition, and I have to tell you, it is amazing. Simply amazing. They don't make this anymore. Oh, I shut off the monitor. Turn back on the monitor. All right, let us get started with the LCD one. Got that on my head. I'm gonna start volume on the amplifier at say nine o'clock. Remember, medium gain. 
And here we go with why am I like this? Oops. Let me see what's going on here. Let's there we go. So at nine o'clock, medium gain. It's about the same volume you would want to listen to a song to if you're just sitting there on the couch working on your laptop, nothing else going on. It's it's not overwhelming volume. It's you know, rel vo relaxing volume you would listen to any headphone with. But here, we don't do that. We're going to ratchet this up. So we're from going from 9 o'clock, we're going to go to 10. And about 10 o'clock, it's f fairly loud. It's louder than you would probably listen at home when nothing else is going around. Any louder than that, then you better have a mariachi band standing right next to you playing into your ear. That's the only excuse why you would go above 10 o'clock. Her voice sounds fairly smooth with the LCD one. I can't hear the grain. It's so, so smooth. The sibilance is lost. There's no sibilance here at all. I can hear the guitar and I can hear the drum, but the drum sounds really muted. And that bass guitar also sounds fairly muted, like, you know, somebody has a bed sheet draped over the bass guitar as they're playing. And her voice sounds about two steps, maybe two steps ahead of the mix on the soundstage, our imaginary soundstage. Her voice is clear. Now at this point, about 1 minute and 35 seconds into the song, you have all the elements playing. you got the guitar, the drum, and you've got her voice at playing at peak volume. Her voice sounds about a step and a half ahead of the instruments. Let me increase the volume to about 11. And at 11 o'clock, I still don't hear any grain or sibilance. It's increased to 12. At 12 o'clock, still no sibilance, no harshness, no grain in her voice. I'm going to bring it back to 9. Okay. So here's the thing. You know, it, it's a pleasant thing. It, it's really pleasant to listen to. I have to be honest. And I've mentioned this before, when I did my 2019 gear review, uh, you know, holiday gift buying guide, I put the LCD-1 on there, not for mixing and mastering, and definitely not for professional use, uh, for critical listening, but for, you know, smooth listening, easy listening. And the LCD-1, for this song, it cuts out all that grain and sibilance in Orla's voice. But that's not accurate. That's not her voice. Her voice is not silky smooth. The, the headphone is processing it as silky smooth, but it's not. It, it, you're supposed to hear the, the sibilance. You're supposed to hear the grain in her voice. It's supposed to sound, in other words, visceral, right? But the LCD-1 has this veneer over it. I'll give you an example. If you've ever watched the classic Star Trek, and there are scenes with women uh, and their female actors in the scene, all of a sudden... When when those actresses are on screen, there seems to be like a haze, a bit of smoothing effect going on. What they used to do is that they would take some Vaseline and they would rub it on the lens itself to, to take out any of the harshness. Maybe the actress has uh, imperfections. And so it would smooth out and it would make it like glowy. Um, that's what this thing is basically doing. It adds a little bit of Vaseline on top of the song. And it sounds pleasant. It's very pleasant to listen to if you just want to sit there and relax. But it's not accurate. It doesn't really tell you what the elements of the song are and what the maybe the errors are in the song. If you don't want the grain, if you want to do something about that grain when you're mixing and mastering, well, the Odyssey is not really going to display that to you, I don't think. So let's switch to the rain. switched on the AB. We're still set at 9 o'clock over there. Let's restart the song. And at 9 o'clock, the RH50 is definitely not the same volume as the LCD. Once we're going to increase to 10 immediately. And about 10 o'clock is where the LCD1 was at 9. So 
obviously you need to play around with the volume. I'm going to increase to 11 o'clock. There's definitely more energy in her voice with the RH50 than there was with the LCD one. You could hear the sibilance in her voice, but it's not overwhelming. It doesn't sound ear piercing. It doesn't sound harsh. I can hear the, the grain in her voice. Okay, so if you're following around, uh, around, following along, around 42, 43 seconds of this song, let's go back. You will hear the, the grain in her voice. You will hear that. So let's go back to about 40 seconds, and I'm going to point it out to you when I hear it, and then you put on your headphones. Let's see if you hear it, okay? So here we go, 40 seconds and playing. Right there. Right there. Right there right there so it, it's it, it sounds like grain at the back of her throat as she's singing it. it's not smoothed out it doesn't sound muffled it doesn't sound as if there's some sort of uh, smoothing effect some vaseline covered over it it's a vastly different experience from the lcd one which does smooth all of that imperfection out let's keep going there's more treble energy to her voice than there was on the lcd one again it's not harsh Let's go to 12 o'clock. Still no harshness. We're going to ratchet it to 1 o'clock so it matches approximately to 12 o'clock on the LCD one. Again, there's no harshness, although there's significantly more treble energy on the RH50 than on the LCD one. Let's bring back to nine o'clock. Now, the, that treble energy that I'm talking about, it's not so much that you would go, I can't listen to these headphones. I'm fairly treble sensitive. And even at that max volume at one o'clock, which is exceptionally loud, uh, it doesn't get harsh at all. You just can hear the difference between these two headphones where the LCD one has a steep roll off with the treble. The RH50 does, and it's a much, much more gradual roll off and you get a lot of the energy still set in the song from the RH50 that simply is not present with the LCD one. So let's talk about soundstage for a minute. I'm going to increase the volume to about 11 o'clock on the RH50. And I'm going to switch to the LCD one. And I'm just going back and forth trying to figure out. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry about that. There's a difference in soundstage. The LCD one sounds more closed off than the RH50. And it's a noticeable difference. It, I wouldn't say it's night and day. It's not like, oh my God, these are the, the most claustrophobic headphones I've ever heard. It's not that at all. It's simply when you do an A and B test, you can immediately tell that the RH50 has wider soundstage. Now, how much wider? You know, it's hard to say because it's, it's not particularly a precise way. There's no precise way to say it, but here, here I'm gonna try. So the LCD one sounds like this, this soundstage, okay? And the RH50 sounds like this. So this versus this. So there is a noticeable difference. It's not like this is the soundstage and then this is the soundstage. It's, that's, that's a completely different story. So LCD1, RH50, just a little bit wider. And you can tell that, that width when you do the A and B test which baffles me a little bit because these are supposed to be open back headphones and you have open back headphones that sound more closed off than a closed back headphone and there's no vents on this thing right i mean look at this there's no vents but this thing has vents all over so the sound stage clearly is wider on the rh50 above average i would say Soundstage on the Odyssey is at best average, something I've said over and over and over 
again. All right, so now let's go to the next song. Let's go to When You Walk Into The Room. No, no, that's not right. When, uh, Want You Back by Haim. Here we go. Currently set at 11 o'clock. I'm going to bring it down to about 10. The primary vocalist voice sounds very smooth. There's no sibilance there. There's no harshness. I could hear the guitar, but it sounds pretty muffled. Now here come the backup vocalists. I can hear the backup vocalists left and right. They're, they're separate tonalities, but they're a little melded, even when the entire mix isn't playing yet. And now you've got the primary vocalist, the backup vocalist, the drum, the guitar, the piano. And it's impossible to separate the tonalities of the backup vocalist. It's, you simply can't do it. The backup vocalist, when the mix is playing, have blended together. They sound like one person. The primary vocalist isn't particularly clear either. I mean, she stands ahead of the backup vocalist whenever they gets playing, but she's about maybe half a step ahead of them. So even her tonality is not particularly clear and separated from the mix. The piano and the Guitar sound blended together, really muffled. There's not sufficient separation. You know, right around this part of the song, 1 minute and 30 seconds, when you have the three vocalists and you have the guitar just strumming in the background, you can hear the separate tonalities, right? You could hear one backup vocalist in the left, one backup vocalist in the right, and you hear the primary vocalist dead center, and you can hear those different tonalities. But the backup vocalists still don't have excellent separation. Their, their tonalities still blend. And so you got to sit there and really listen to hear their separation. But when the entire mix comes in and everybody is singing, those backup vocalists sound like one person. They, they blend it together. Consequently, if you're sitting there trying to just nitpick and, and find nuances in a vocalist or multiple vocalists, the LCD-1 simply does not provide it. Instead, it does this smoothing effect again, this veneer where it takes all those elements and just kind of crams them together, you know, shoves them together and provides this warmer presentation. It sounds more intimate because you can't really distinguish anything else. It doesn't sound analytical. It doesn't sound uh, critical. It just sounds more like uh, more closed off. Um, and that's just not soundstage I'm talking about. I'm talking about the presentation of the vocalists too. The fact that you cannot separate them to any uh, great degree. All right, so let's switch to the RH-50. And let's restart this song. And here we go. I'm gonna increase the volume to 11. You can immediately hear more treble energy on the RH-50. And in fact, let's go back to about ten, uh, 10 seconds, I think. Okay, I'm going to go back to 7 seconds, and at 10 seconds, she says the word we, and she drags that W out. We, okay? 8 seconds, I was off. That word was muffled on the LCD-1. You heard it, but that visceral grain in the vocalist's voice did not come out on the LCD-1. It came out on the RH-50. Let's keep playing. You can hear the echo effect a bit clearer on the ARH-50. And here comes a backup vocalist. Absolutely separate tonality. There is no way when you do an AMB test at this portion of the song, there is no way that any reasonable person is going to say, no, the LCD-1 definitely has more separation. It simply doesn't. In fact, there's no reasonable person who's doing an honest A and B test who's going to tell you that the LCD-1 and the RH-50 have the same amount of separation with these vocalists. That is not true. The RH-50 simply has more noticeable night and day separation of the vocalists. I'm doing the best I can trying to volume match, right? I mean, I can, there's nothing I can do without a digital display. It is what it is. Trying to volume match the best of my ability Using the same methodology here for both headphones, I am 
telling you, the RH50 provides significantly more separation of these vocalists, more so than the LCD one. That is a night and day discernment. Let's keep playing. The primary vocalist sounds like she's about two to three steps ahead of the mix. The backup vocalists sound clear, left and right, separate tonalities. I can hear the guitar, the piano. Here comes the drum. And the three vocalists. When all the mix is playing, there is still a little bit of blending of the backup vocalists, but they're easier to separate than there was on the LCD one. In fact, I can hear one louder on the left ear cup than I can on the right ear cup. Whereas on the LCD one, all of them started blending together where the backup vocalist sounded like one person and the primary vocalist sounded like she was maybe half a step ahead of the others and her voice also started blending. With the RH50, even with the entire mix playing, the primary vocalist sounds ahead, at least one to two steps ahead of everybody else, the rest of the mix, and sounds clear, but you can also hear the backup vocalists have separate tonality. Now that separate tonality isn't, uh, isn't to the same degree as separated as it was when the entire mix wasn't playing. There's still a little bit of blending, but it's definitely different from the LCD one where it just sounded like one person. It's not, there's a bit of blending there. So the way I figured that out is because on the left ear cup, one of the backup vocalists sounds a little bit louder than on the right ear cup, and that backup vocalist on the right ear cup is just a little bit quieter. And so you've got this volume differential uh, that really jumps out at you. With the LCD one, there is no, you can't hear that because it's simply not happening. So once again, the RH50 has better separation of the vocalist overall. Um, when none of the other stuff or only a few of the elements in the mix are playing, the RH50 is a night and day difference. When everything in the mix is playing, the RH50 is not to the same degree night and day different, but there is far less uh, melding of the backup vocalist than there was on the LCD one. The RH50 doesn't smooth it out like the uh, LCD one does. The LCD one just smooths it out and crams it together. The RH50, total opposite of that. Okay, so let's go to our last song. I'm gonna bring volume down to about 10 o'clock here. Last song is Hush Hush Baby by Luxandra. Here we go. At the very beginning of the song, I hear the humming. It sounds very smooth. It sounds like a piano, very high key. I, I, can't, I don't know what it is. And at this point, you're going to hear her start singing, about 22 seconds in. No harshness, no sibilance, no grain in her voice, even though there's supposed to be a little bit of grain there. I hear the piano in the background. She is about two to three steps ahead of that piano, but the piano sounds a little muffled. Almost like there's a bed sheet over the piano absorbing some of that air, some of that energy. It's still clear. It's simply not particularly energetic and it's not particularly um, obvious. Let's skip ahead a little bit to about midway. And even at this point, I could hear the, the primary vocalist and I could hear the piano, but the piano, again, doesn't really have a whole lot of character. It's not clear. When she's singing, the piano is like somewhere in the background and almost like it's such a distant away from her that you can't pick out the individual notes. Okay, so let's switch to the RH50. I'm going to increase the volume to about 11. There we go, about 11 o'clock. And let's restart. Here we go. Oh, needs to be a little bit louder. There we go. That, that high-pitched piano sounds 
about the same as on the LCD one. Maybe a little bit more clear, but it's hard to tell. And now you hear her singing. You can hear the grain in her voice that you simply couldn't hear on the LCD one. Okay, so here's the thing. The LCD one has that sharp roll off of the sibilants, right? And so the RH50 has a much, much more gradual roll off. Here's the thing. When you're listening to her and when she first starts singing around 25 seconds into the song, 20 seconds into the song, whatever it is, her S words shh, shh, turn into shh, right? They're blunted. So it, it, instead of saying Rupert Neve designs, the Odyssey turns it into Rupert Neve designs. Shh. Adds an, S, an H at the end, shh, shh. Whereas with the RH50, it keeps the S sound. And so the LCD-1 significantly blunts the, the, uh, the sibilance and the treble energy so that you're not really getting the accurate voice. That's number one. Number two, there's natural grain in her voice that the LCD-1 did not present. It simply was not there. The RH50 does, in fact, present it. Okay, let's keep going. That, that grain in her voice is not harsh. It's not ear piercing. She sounds clear. The piano actually sounds much less muffled on the RH50 than it does on the LCD one. It doesn't sound like it's at a significant distance away and there's a bed sheet covering it. Instead, the piano sounds like it's about 10, 15 feet away from the singer. And you can hear individual notes that were harder to pick out on the LCD one. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about conclusions. Look, guys, whereas I could have said, and I did say, that for bass, both of these headphones perform fairly, fairly close to each other, very close. In fact, pretty much indistinguishable. For mids, there are significant differences here worth your consideration. Number one, soundstage on the RH50 is bigger than on the LCD one. The LCD one has about average, probably less than average soundstage on some songs. The RH50 has wider soundstage, uh, uh, average to above average soundstage. So you're gonna get more width out of the song on the cheaper headphone than you will on the LCD one, on the closed back headphone than you will on the open back headphone. Think about that for a minute. Then, then, there, then there's the separation of multiple vocalists. The LCD one simply can't do it. It, it has this tenaci tendency, I was gonna say tenacity, but tendency to meld all those voices together with multiple instruments playing. Whereas with the RH50, it doesn't have that tendency. There's a bit of melding that goes on, but you can still hear the separation that was much more muffled and muted on the LCD one. Then there's the smoothing effect that, that veneer that the Odyssey puts on that the brain doesn't. It, it, it adds so much smoothness to a song that it sounds pleasant. In fact, if you were to sit there and say, which one sounds more pleasant? It's a personal question. But if you were going to ask me that personal question, I would say, you know, I think the I think the LCD one sounds pretty pleasant to me. And if I were to sit there and just want to listen to a, several songs for an hour and I just want to relax, which one of these two headphones would I pick just for relaxing? I would I would pick the LCD one, to be honest, because it's got that smoothing effect. But that doesn't mean that the RH50 is harsh. It's not. It's simply that in comparison, the RH50 has the grain to reproduce, has the ability to reproduce the grain in these vocalists, has the, the sibilance that the vocalists naturally have. It's still not harsh or ear bleeding or, or distorted, but you get the detail the LCD one simply doesn't provide. And so when I, when I hear all this stuff, when I do these tests, one thing jumps out at me, which is the false marketing. This thing is, you know, true um, mixing and mastering gear. This is amazing for professional use. 
And that's not the case. It can't be. It can't be the case because the LCD-1 does things that really shouldn't be happening for a professional critical listening, mixing and mastering headphone. And when the cheaper headphone, much, much cheaper headphone, can do the things that the LCD-1 marketing promises that the LCD-1 can do, you have to, you have to re just, just reevaluate the, the landscape. Either, and here, here are the possibilities. Number one, I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm completely wrong about everything. There's going to be somebody who says that. Great. Why don't you buy both headphones, listen to it yourself, upload your conclusions, and then, then you can complain. I'm going to put that to the side. Two, that the RH50 is that much better than the LCD one. It is, it's technology that it, it has in here, the tuning the masterful workmanship, the masterful workmanship is so excellent, so astounding that it must beat the Odyssey LCD one. Uh, that's not the case. All right. So the rain doesn't have, the rain doesn't have supreme technology built into it. That doesn't have any secret sauce that other headphones don't have. It's using a dynamic headphone uh, driver. It's using a dynamic driver. The tuning to it is, is nice. It's more accurate than it is on the LCD one, but this thing doesn't have any proprietary technology. Okay. So option two also doesn't sound right to me. Option three, that one person, one person, one company is mismarketing, lying, deceiving, cheating, you, the consumer. Which is it? Well, out of these two, there's only one company that has just been marketing in your face. I mean, let's be honest. Did you hear about this headphone before I brought it to your attention? You didn't, did you? So let's not go start blaming Rain for marketing because they have a terrible marketing team. Terrible. Odyssey has a fantastic marketing team, on the other hand, and they shove this down your throat telling you repeatedly how amazing these things are how um professionals in the reviewer world and professionals in mixing and mastering booths have complimented this headphone without actually giving you any real details complimented this headphone so there's only one company that's that's marketing and odyssey is it and their marketing simply doesn't bear out. It doesn't bear the fruit. Now, had Odyssey said that the LCD one is great for audiophiles listening, casual listening, it's got smooth sound signature, it's got the house sound signature of the LCD two. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't. But let's say they wanted to say that it's it's a mini LCD two. Okay, I'd buy that. Sure. If you wanted to tell me that this thing is a relaxing pair of headphones. But to market it as a, a mixing and mastering critical use headphone, that's false advertisement. That's simply not true. That's why there's such a split in opinion about the LCD one. That you have a lot of people who go out there and you and they purchase this headphone based upon recommendations. And the people go, you know, I, I wasn't wowed by it. Some people say, I really love these headphones, you sound fantastic. That's great. I'm glad that you purchased a headphone that you really do like. But why did you buy it? Did you buy it for critical use? And if you did, what headphone were you using before you bought the LCD one? And how much worse was that compared to this? Second question, if you didn't buy it for the, for the critical use, what did you buy it for? Did you buy it for easy listening? And if so, then I can understand why you might be saying to yourself, boy, these are really good. These are smooth because they are They're pretty smooth sounding, but that's not the marketing. Now, you are free to purchase a headphone, any audio gear, anything, for whatever reason you want. That's totally up to you. The problem I have continually with audio companies is that they, they lie to you about something. And there's always a subset of individuals who take the audio company's word and purchase it based upon what they and reviewers and professionals say. Um, and so... If that's you, if you're the type that says, look, I don't know what to believe from users, but I really want 
to listen to Odyssey, they say it's a critical listening headphone for professional use, and that's really where I want. The answer is no. That's not really what you're getting. In fact, that's not what you're getting. It's not really. It's simply not true. Because the significantly cheaper headphone does the things that Odyssey promises. God damn it. Does the thing that Odyssey promises um, but can't deliver on with these headphones. All right. So I hope that this has been of some help. I know that uh, some people are going to be somewhat upset, irritated, bothered, blah, 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 that uh, the LCD one is getting such a negative review from me, but it's not. I'm not giving it a, a negative review. It was on my holiday buying guide for a reason. Uh, it's getting the company, frankly, it's not the headphone. The company is, is getting a negative review for their shenanigans. And other people who push that marketing are getting a negative review from me. The headphones are fine. They're good headphones. Are they worth $400? Ah, I don't know. I don't think so. But they're not terrible headphones. They're not the worst headphones you could you could possibly buy but by any stretch. But for a specific use case scenario for professionals, that's that this simply doesn't cut it. The RH50, in all other in every respect, is superior so far, right? Bass equal mids, RH50 wins, soundstage, RH50 wins, detail retrieval, RH50 wins. Energy in the treble without harshness, RH50 wins. What can I say? All right, hopefully, uh, all of this is, uh, yeah, hopefully this has been of some help. Uh, next video, hopefully tomorrow, if I can swing it, we're going to do the treble test between these two and then uh, move on from there to other things. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for donating. Hey, if, you're, if you like the similar content, think about donating a couple of bucks to me a month on Patreon. I would truly appreciate it. And by the way, if you know what this is, tell me in the comments below. Let me know if you ever heard of it and if you want to listen to it, if you want to know what it sounds like, because these things are impossible to find anymore. There's only one left on eBay as of today. If you can find it, tell me what it is. All right. Take care. Thank you so much for uh, watching.